Dear viewers, today we'll be learning about interpretation of an X-ray abdomen. How to approach to the abdominal X-ray. It is essential to have a structured approach when we are approaching to an abdominal X-ray. And this ensures that all the aspects of image are assessed in a comprehensive manner and the acquired information can then be integrated into the clinical scenario to proceed to a logical diagnosis. The approach to the X-ray abdomen includes, first of all, we should identify the image. How? We should look into that. Is it an anterior posterior supine view or a lateral decubitus view? Then we should look for the ID of the patient, sex, gender. And then we should look for the technical adequacy. What is this technical adequacy? We should be looking for, if I'm looking into an X-ray abdomen, is it showing all the essential elements of the body? They have been covered within this given X-ray or not. And then we should be looking for presence of any artifacts or the foreign body. And after that, we should be looking at the GI tract and the bowel gas pattern that can be seen easily. And then after that, we should be looking at the presence of the solid organs. I know these are, this is a plain X-ray abdomen, so it cannot be showing all the details, but it gives some rough idea. And then we should be looking for aorta and any vessel, are they visible? And then at the last, we should be looking for the muscles, and the bones. And we should not be forgetting one very important point that the GI tract contains gas. And it is important to realize that when lying supine, fluid will displace posteriorly and the gas will rise up anteriorly to lie above it. So that's why an anterior posterior supine X-ray chest will not demonstrate air fluid levels and we need to have a lateral decubitus disposition if patient cannot stand or we need an erect posture. So with this note, I like to start. So first of all, we are looking into the bony landmarks and when we talk about the bony landmarks, this given x-ray is showing me the lower rib cage along with the few of the thoracic vertebrae and then the lumbar vertebrae and then the sacrum and the lower the lower part of this x-ray I can see very clearly the pelvis and the proximal femur bone. So let's identify, let's highlight these bony landmarks. So right now I can just outline the vertebrae and there you can see I'm working on a rib and its vertebrae, both the sides. And this is my 11th thoracic vertebra. And below to it, I can see very clearly the 12th thoracic vertebrae. Let me outline him. And then we can see the 12th rib, which is nicely shown on both the sides. And I don't see any significant pathology. So this is my T12 vertebrae. So after that, I'll be having the lumbar vertebrae. So this is my first lumbar vertebra, the L1. And you can see it's transverse processes. This was my L1, this is my L2 and going down, I'm highlighting L3, this is my fourth lumbar vertebra and this is the fifth. L5, 
L5 vertebra and after that below to it we can see very clearly the sacrum. Sacrum are the sacral vertebrae they fuse to make one mass and on the side of the sacrum we can see the ilium bone and there I can show you the marking of the pelvis along with the ilium bone and you can see the landmarks and down you can see the head of the femur on both the sides along with the greater trochanter. So now we have seen the bony landmarks which were clearly visible in this given x-ray. I'll, I'll be erasing it to highlight other important structures which are visible within this x-ray. So now after that let's look at the location of the solid organs. On the left side, so what are we looking at? This is my left kidney. And where is my right kidney? You can see part of it because the remaining part is overshadowed by gases. And this is my right kidney. We all know that the right kidney is lower than the left kidney because of the presence of the liver. So let's look at where is the liver. If you can pay attention just close to my 11th rib you can see on the sides there I can see very easily the location of my liver. And we all know liver extend right up to the level of the nipple within the thoracic cavity and if, if liver is enlarged then it is being palpable below to my costal margin. So after looking into these solid organs, so let me raise them so we can highlight other important areas. Now I like to show you another very important landmark and which is a very important structure whensoever you are looking into any x-ray abdomen never ignore this part. Can you see this obliquely going line? That's nothing but my source major muscle. This is a very important point and whensoever we are commenting on to any x-ray we should be looking for this muscle. This is my source major muscle. After looking into this source major muscle, now we should start looking into these different other shadows. And if you can pay attention, can you see this little black area on the left hypochondrium? And into the and extending into the right into the epigastric region. This is my stomach. Now we can see there is another gas shadow that is more consistent on the right side. And if you can see in the lower part we can see very clearly a lobular structure and what is this area? That's my cecum. Cecum is the place which is located in the right iliac fossa in the right lower quadrant and that's the beginning of my large intestine. So let's complete it. These are the hostras, the classical appearance. And you can see now, this is, we are looking at what? This is my 
ascending colon. And at this place, that is my hepatic flexor. Why I am calling it as hepatic, hepatic flexor? Because you can see that the presence of the liver. Where was the liver? If you remember, I just draw it for you. Let me draw, redraw it again. So there you can see at this place, my ascending colon just make a bend and this bending part is known as the hepatic flexor. Now the transverse colon is not clearly visible to me. Let me try continue with this. So this is the location. I cannot see that. But now I can see the descending part of my large intestine. And this is my descending colon. After that, this descending colon at this point, it turns up as my sigmoid colon is here. So this bended part is known as sigmoid colon and this sigmoid colon in the later part it continues as rectum which subsequently becomes the anal canal. The x-ray abdomen is useful for when we are handling a patient who has presented with acute abdomen, severe abdominal pain, and especially for the diagnosing of what? If someone has an obstruction of the intestine, could be an obstruction of the small intestine or the large intestine. And then this gives us a guide. And on the basis of that, we can go for further more diagnostic investigations and that we will be discussing in our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.